Welcome to this next video in the playlist on vector spaces. Okay, so in uh, previous videos we've now discussed what a dual vector space is, and we've also discussed the dual basis for a dual vector space of a finite dimensional vector space with a basis. Uh, what we're now going to discuss is the double dual of a vector space. Okay, so firstly let's start off with the definition and then very quickly we will recoil back to thinking about finite dimensional vector spaces. The definition, however, again extends uh, to infinite dimensional vector spaces, so we'll start off completely broadly, uh, but then we'll very quickly recoil back to finite dimensional vector spaces where the theory is simpler. Okay, so initially though we're completely general, so we've got some vector space V over a field capital F. So we start off with our general vector space capital V over some abstract field capital F. Okay, then what we've now seen that we can construct is the algebraic dual uh, of this vector space, uh, which uh, we call the dual vector space. We notate this V star, and this is another vector space, which is over the field capital F. Okay, and the definition then of the dual vector space is that it's as a set, is the set containing all linear maps from the vector space V onto uh, the field F, and we can write that quite simply like so. It's the set of all homomorphisms, because after all, linear maps are just vector space homomorphisms, and we're talking about vector spaces over the field F, so we put a subscript F there, from the vector space V to the field F, and you can always view the field F as being a vector space over itself. Okay, so as a set, the dual vector space is just the set containing all linear maps from the vector space V onto the field F. So if I draw a picture then of it here, so this box will represent the, represent the set uh, that is the algebraic dual vector space here, and the elements of this set will be maps, so we might call it phi for instance, and these maps will map the vector space V onto the field F, and this will need to be a linear map, so it will need to um, obey those two criteria that we have for linear maps, which are that um, phi of V plus V bar, where V and V bar are elements of our initial vector space V, is equal to phi of V plus phi of V bar, Okay, and this addition here will be addition in the vector space capital V, whilst this addition here will be addition in the field capital F. And as in previous videos, I will colour code this, so we'll have addition and other operations in the field coloured in in purple here, uh, and we'll have operations in the initial vector space capital V uh, in orange here. Okay, and that has to be true no matter what V and V bar you pick from the uh, vector space capital V, and also V of C times V, where C is some scalar from the field, so we've got C scalar multiplied by V, uh, so that's another vector space operation. This has to be the same as C times V of V, where of course this is now multiplication in the field, which in this case is our codomain vector space as far as this linear map is concerned. Okay, so. Um, V must be a linear map between the vector space capital V and the field which it's over. Okay, right. So you get all of these different linear maps from the vector space capital V into the field capital F, and you stick all of them into a great big set here, and that's the set which you're going to use to construct uh, the algebraic dual vector space. Okay, and then we can stick addition and scalar multiplication laws on that in order to construct a vector space out of that, and that's called the dual vector space of this vector space V over F. Now, we don't have to stop there. You can go on, okay, because this is now a vector space, V star over F here. This dual vector space is a vector space in its own right. So why don't we take the dual of this vector space? Why don't we construct V double star, V star star like this, which is called the double dual? Okay, so this is known as the job double dual, and it's just the dual of this vector space V star here. Okay, and the definition of V double star uh, is exactly the same with respect to V star as the definition of V star was with respect to V. Okay, so the double dual is just going to contain, as a set, it's just going to be equal to all of the linear maps 
from uh, the vector space V star now into the field capital F. Okay, so as a set, I'll write this out. So as a set, it's going to consist of all homomorphisms, and of course we're still working over the field F, from V star this time to F. Okay, so its elements, if I draw a picture of it here, its elements will be maps which I might call zeta, okay, another tacky Greek symbol, okay, so we'll call the elements of the double jaw zeta throughout this video, and I'll colour it in in yellow here, and these are now going to be linear maps from the dual vector space into the field, so zeta will map V star into the field F. Okay, and again, these will have to be linear maps um, so that they are actually homomorphisms of the dual vector space onto the field capital F. Okay, right, so that then is the definition of the double dual uh, vector space. Okay, now, in infinite dimensional vector spaces, this gets quite complicated, okay, because in infinite dimensional vector spaces, V star is not actually isomorphic to V, it's bigger than V, okay, and then if you take the double dual on top of that, you'll go even bigger, so you do actually end up constructing more and more vector spaces as you go on. Uh, so in infinite dimensional vector spaces, this gets complicated. However, in finite dimensional vector spaces, this all works very, very beautifully, because V double star is not actually equal to a new vector space at all. Well, actually, firstly, let me say, if we're now going to take V as finite dimensional, so we're quickly recoiling back to our finite dimensional case now. So this was the definition uh, which applies in finite dimensional and infinite dimensional vector spaces, but we're now going to explore this further for finite dimensional vector spaces. So what we're going to say from now on only applies to finite dimensional vector spaces. Okay, so one of the things that we showed in the previous video entitled Basis of a Dual Vector Space was that actually this one, V star here, is going to be isomorphic to this one. Okay, uh, so if this one was isomorphic to this one, then because this is defined in ex with exactly the same way with respect to this as this was from this, this one will be isomorphic to this one, and if this one's isomorphic to this one, and this one's isomorphic to this one, then of course this one will be isomorphic to this one, so you'll just get the same vector space over and over again. Okay, now I hinted in the previous video as to why uh, we actually care about the dual vector space in the um, context of finite dimensional vector spaces, because you might think, well, why would we care if these two are just isomorphic to one another? Why does it matter? Well, what matters is that we interpret this as actually being these linear maps from the vector space to the field F, and it's very interesting that that set of linear maps from the vector space V to the field F can be equipped with a vector space structure isomorphic to this. Okay, so that's why we view this as a separate structure to this, even though they are algebraically isomorphic. Uh, the actual interpretation of the elements here is different from the interpretation of the elements here. Okay, uh, what we're going to discuss now is that actually, if you t then take the double dual vector space, V double star, this is actually equal, not only isomorphic, but really we can think of it as being equal to the vector space V, okay, and this really starts to make these two beautifully dual to one another, okay, because we can think of V star as being the set of uh, linear maps from the vector space V into the field F, but it works in the mirror image as well. V, we can think of this, in the case of finite dimensional vector spaces, we can think of V as being the set of linear maps from the dual vector space, V star to the field F as well, and I've missed off the little subscript F there. So they truly work together, they are truly each other's dual, okay, they truly work in a pair, so V and V star, in the case of finite dimensional vector spaces, are truly each other's pair. One represents uh, linear maps uh, for the other onto the field capital F. Okay, so the rest of this video then is going to be devoted to trying to understand why this is true, why we can think of the elements of the initial vector space as representing these linear maps of covectors in the dual vector space onto the field F.
Okay, so, the first thing I want to do is understand how you can actually think of elements in this initial vector space as representing or being associated with um, elements uh, from the double dual vector space, i.e. maps from the dual vector space onto the field F. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. So, let's take some little v from our initial vector space capital V. So we've just taken some arbitrary vector from our initial vector space capital V. And what I now want to do is define a function uh, which we'll call E sub v, which is going to be a function from my um, dual vector space v star here to the field f. Right? It's going to be exactly one of these functions that I've previously called zeta, okay? Uh, providing, of course, that I can show that it's a linear map. Uh, so what I want to do is firstly define this and then show that it's a linear map and then show you that because of this, every single element in our initial vector space can be associated with a linear map uh, from the dual vector space onto the field at capital F. Okay, so that's the first challenge. So, how am I going to define this? Well, it's quite simply going to be the evaluation map, hence why I've called it capital E subscript V. Okay, now remember, what are the elements of V star, the dual vector space? Well, these are these linear maps themselves, uh, which map, um, where is this, which map the vector space capital V onto the field capital F. Okay, so remember the covectors are actually these functions of the original vector space themselves. Okay, so the way this is going to work is this evaluation function, um, subscript v, it is going to map a covector phi specifically onto the element of the field, which is phi evaluated at v. Okay, so if you want to know where any covector in the dual vector space is going to be taken by this evaluation function uh, for the vector v, all you do is say, okay, where does this covector map the vector v onto in the field? All of the covectors here are, after all, mappings from the vector space v onto the field f. So they are going to map every single vector here into the field F. So for this specific vector that I've picked here, okay, and I should stress this is fixed, I've picked a vector from my initial vector space. For whichever one I picked, I can define this, and this is a perfectly good map. It will indeed map all elements of the dual vector space onto elements of the field, okay? And what I now want to check is that it's actually a linear map and therefore that truly this map is going to be in the double dual space. It's going to be a mapping from the uh, dual vector space into the field that's a linear map, and those are the maps that are in the double dual space. Okay, so a linear map then, what would it mean to be a linear map? Well, it will mean that E sub V of two elements added to one another in the dual vector space. So phi1 plus phi2. And note this is addition in the dual vector space. And I will be denoting addition in the dual vector space by red. Everything so far with the dual vector space has been colored in in red. So I'll color addition in the dual vector space in in red. And that's the addition that we spent uh, a long time going through uh, in one of the earlier videos in this playlist entitled dual vector spaces. Okay, and we want this to be the same as e sub v of phi 1 plus e sub v of phi 2, where you add these two together, these two answers together in the field. Okay, so this is going to be addition in the field. This is in the codomain, effectively, and the codomain, of course, is going to be the field here. So you firstly ask, well, where will phi 1 be mapped onto by E sub V, and that will be mapped onto some element of the field. You ask where will phi 2 be mapped onto by E sub V, that will be some element of the field, and then you add them together in the field. Okay, so that's the first thing then that we need to prove. Obviously there's going to be a second criterion, but we'll worry about that later. So let's firstly try and prove this. So let's take the left hand side and try and turn it into the right hand side here. So the left hand side then, E sub V of phi 1 plus phi 2. Well, phi 1 plus phi 2 in the dual vector space will just be some covector in the dual vector space. I, it will be some function which maps all of the elements of the original vector space V onto the field. So we, if we want to take the evaluation function subscript V of this, all we need to do is evaluate what 
V1 plus V2 of V actually is, and I'll stress again that this is addition uh, in the dual vector space. Okay, so this is just equal to this. Just by definition, I'm just using this here. Okay, now what we need to do is use the way that we defined addition on the dual vector space. How did we define addition on the dual vector space? Well, the way we defined addition on the dual vector space was if you wanted to know what V1 plus V2 did as a map, you just took any vector in the original vector space V and mapped it onto V1 of V plus V2 of V, where uh, this is addition in the field. Okay, so V1 is a map which sends all vectors in the vector space onto the field, capital F, so this is an element of the field, uh, so is V2, and then you just take these two answers and add them together in the field. That's the most logical way to define addition uh, of uh, two covectors, and indeed that is the way that we define addition of two covectors. But then, by definition, again, using this definition here of the evaluation function uh, for V, uh, we can say phi 1 of V, by definition, that's just equal to EV of phi 1. Okay, so we're evaluating phi 1 at V, so that is just equal to this, and of course phi 2 V uh, is exactly equal to this. Again, just going in reverse here this time. Okay, and I could actually write out this a little bit maybe more explicitly, that e sub v of phi is just equal to phi of v. Okay, so that's just this written out a bit more explicitly, and we've used that here in reverse. Okay, so indeed we have now shown that this is a linear map. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you firstly add the two uh, covectors together in the dual vector space and then do the map, or if you firstly uh, do the maps on each of these and then add them together in the field. Okay, right, so it is a linear map. Uh, well, no, it's obeyed criterion number one of linear maps. Of course, we need to check the other criterion. So criterion number two of a linear map says that E sub V of, now we need to scale or multiply our covector by some element of the field. So I'll take C as my arbitrary element of the field, and I'll take phi as my arbitrary covector here. And I need to make sure that this is equal to C times E sub V of V, like so. And just to colour things in here, uh, red is for scalar multiplication in the um, dual vector space, so we're multiplying C and V together here in the dual vector space and then taking E sub V of the answer. And of course here, this is not multiplication in the dual vector space, this is multiplication in the field algebra. Okay, so we need to prove that this is true. Uh, so once again, we'll take the left-hand side and turn it into the right-hand side, and this one's very easy. Okay, so just applying the definition of what E sub V of C times V is, well, it will just be C times V of V. Okay, so C times V, that is just some uh, covector in your dual vector space. Okay, so if we evaluate that now at V, which is exactly what this function does, we're just going to take C times V, Okay, and I'll put in the red dot there, so those were multiplied in the dual vector space, and then we're evaluating that at V. Okay, so this is, is just applying the definition here forwards this time. Okay, now what we're going to do is apply the definition of uh, how scalar multiplication works in the uh, dual vector space. Okay, so if you scale or multiply a covector by an element of the field, the function that that is going to equal is the same as first the evaluate v under the function phi, and then multiply that by c in the field. So this just becomes c times phi of v. Okay, so that's just the definition of scalar multiplication in the dual vector space. And then, of course, what we can do is then apply this definition in reverse to say that phi of v is just exactly the, the uh, evaluation function for v uh, of phi. Okay, so this becomes this. And therefore, we have turned uh, the left-hand side into the right-hand side, and therefore, the second criterion for this to be a linear map does indeed hold true. Okay, so what we've succeeded in doing then is showing that any vector in the original vector space v over f can be associated with one of these evaluation functions, which will map all of the covectors onto elements of the field.
and indeed these evaluation functions are linear maps, so they are going to be in our double dual uh, space, okay, our double dual vector space, V double star. So that's the first part. Now what we want to do is the reverse. We want to show that any element of the double dual space, any zeta in the double dual space, can always, for any zeta in the double dual space, we want to show that we can always find uh, some vector in our original vector space, V over F, that is actually associated with that. Okay, so I think we'll have a break, however, before doing that, and we'll come back to this in the next video.